is it? Well, essentially, it's a studio in a box. It's a sequencer, it's a sampler, it's got inbuilt granular synthesis, wavetable synthesis, it's even got a little FM radio in there as well. It's got effects, it's got mastering effects. So, everything you need to create a track, you've got in this one little box. But why is it called a tracker? Well, it doesn't use conventional sequencing methods that are sort of based on old analog methods that you used to get from a, a recording console onto tape, and it's all quite linear. The roots of this are firmly based in 1980s home computers and in computer games in particular, where processing power was limited, memory was limited. So this is a really efficient way of making a sequence. And looking at this, you can see here we've got eight tracks. If we go into the pattern page, And what you can see there is it's playing down through the sequence rather than left to right, which is what you normally get. But the big thing about this is that every single step can have a different instrument on it. We've got four parameters we can use on every step. We've got the note, we've got the instrument. So in here I've got how many instruments already loaded in. We've got... I think I've got 27 in there. You can get up to 64. We've got effects as well, and these effects are a bit more like MIDI effects plus some audio effects. So we have things like filters, overdrive, LFOs, uh, random note, random instrument. We've got rolls, glide, panning, microtune. So it's a really efficient way of doing stuff. On every step, it's just got four things to remember. The note, the instrument, FX1 and FX2 parameters. And to me, that means there's less to get bogged down in. It's really focused, but it also means because it's using a, a low amount of processing power, the timing is really good. But to boil it down into the basic things, it's a sampler with a sequencer plus a couple of synth engines and a few tricks up its sleeve. So let's take a look at what we get with the hardware. It's a really, really nice little unit, this. It's got a fair bit of weight to it. It hasn't got its own power. It hasn't got a battery. So this is powered via USB-C. You can power it via your computer if you want. It doesn't take up much, much energy at all. Got this jog wheel here, and this feels really nice, actually. It's got a sort of bit of resistance, but it, it doesn't click, but it moves to independent points. So when you're trying to do anything precisely, you can actually move to the next parameter value really easily. It's really quite cool. It does feel nice. Got these silicon buttons here, these 48 silicon buttons. And these are either used for playing an instrument. They're in four rows of 12, so every, every row is an octave. Or you can pick your sample, go to instrument. Change the length of your pattern, so it's at 64 at the minute, 112, 128, 20, let's put it back on 64. So you find yourself using those all the time. These eight button here select what you're doing on the screen, so if we go into the master mode for example, we mute the tracks, or solo them. It's not a touch screen, it doesn't have to be, it's really easy to navigate using the buttons. If we go back to the pattern for example, just move around, go to the top, select the whole row, select everything, and then use the buttons below the screen for all the menus. So expand pattern, duplicate pattern, copy pattern, so you don't miss it having a touch screen whatsoever. On the top right here we've got our screen selectors or our mode selectors I suppose, so it's really easy to navigate your way around it. So I'm trying to think of what to do first on this and I think maybe show you some of the instrument parameters and how you sort of mess around with the samples. Going to sample playback, we've got one shot forward, backward loop, ping pong loop. And we can even make a wavetable from that so you can create your own digital oscillators. Go down to the wavetable. And if you go into the instrument parameters then, we can do things like change the envelope, so take the release off. And you can hear that's got a decay on it. If we go into next page, go to the effects, we can take that decay off. Or rather reverb. And we've got other things like the bit depth and the overdrive. 
but let's load another sample and play with chopping it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's really useful for chopping a sample up, obviously. All sorts of fun to be had with it, obviously. And then we've got a sample editor where we can add effects to it. And if we go into the sample editor, we can see all the effects we've got here. Crop, reverse, normalize compressor and uh, delay, so we try and add a delay to it. So select effect, time, let's put it on about, it's 170 BPM, so around 340 milliseconds. Let's turn the feedback down, preview it. Very basic controls, but very useful as well. And once you've done that, so I've previewed it there, if you apply it, you've applied it to the sample. The sample's still on your SD card as it was in its raw form, but in the song now, that's got the delay on it. Uh, let's try it with something else. Let's try vocal sample. These are just numbers. These are just numbers. Go into the editor. Let's time stretch that. Time stretch it as a beat. And time stretching as a beat, you can set the BPM. If we go in, select effect. BPM 174, let's just knock that down so it goes a bit slower. Um, granule 1, let's just see what it sounds like. These are just numbers. So it's definitely time stretched. So loads of stuff you can do with your samples. One thing we've not looked at yet is granulate. Let's have a look at that. So go into sample playback, bring it to granulate using this voice. Let's change the position a little bit, change the length. Messing around, really. Maybe not the best sample to try and get a tone out of, but let's try and make a beat. So we've got an empty pattern here. Let's start off by adding a hi-hat. And the reason I'm going to start with a hi-hat is to show you how you can fill the spaces really quickly. So if we select the instrument, hi-hat closed, let's select the note, we'll have a C5, and now let's fill the whole pattern in. Let's go to record, let's just go shift and up, and now we've selected everything, go into fill. We're gonna fill each of them, every single step, or should we do random, let's do it random so that So that density, let's see, let's put the density at, I don't know, 82%. So 82% of those steps will get triggered. Note, let's put it on the C5 again so they're all the same. And fill. There we go. What have we got there? Let's take out a record in case I ruin anything. That's probably about 82%. <laughs> That'll do for now, let's put some closed hats in. And let's select the rest of the pattern. Okay, go to fill. We want all of them, so we want each of them. Let's go to each, every fourth step. And we want, fill type is constant, and the note C5 again, fill it. 
And here we go, we can see on the offbeats we've got a hat. We do the same with the kick. Shift and home gets us to the top, press record, shift and up, selects everything, and then we want to go into the instrument, and we want to kick drum, then we go to fill, we want to fill every fourth step, each of them fill type constant, note C5, fill, and there we've got one on the start of every beat. But we've used three tracks there, we can render that down into a single track. And that track that you heard in the intro, for example, that's eight tracks. So we could render those first three or four tracks. If we go into pattern, let's render those. We go shift. Let's do the first couple of bars. There we go. Render selection, render and load. We've got it there. If we go to sample playback, here it is. We've also got a song mode. If we go into song mode, so we've got different patterns playing here. Let's play it. It's really quite powerful, isn't it? On this, we've got variations of velocity on the hi-hat, which gives it a really nice feel. And a couple of ratchets there as well. Just showing how the different effects work. We could put a filter on them. Let's start after those ratchets. Let's select this lot down here. Okay, we're gonna change the effect. Let's go into record, let's go to fill. So we want each of them, every step, um, we want to change, let's see, let's change the filter, the low pass filter. There it is. We want to go from, um, let's from fully unfiltered to completely filtered and fill that. And we can see here, whoops, that those L low pass filters, they're moving and you can actually see the values changing on these buttons here. Let's have a listen. And really all I'm showing there is how you can set up automations of various parameters like you would do in a door. We can also record stuff in this as well. So we can record from vinyl, for example. So I think I've gone over most of the major functions of this. Uh, what are my final thoughts? Well, you might have gathered that I think this is a really cool and creative little tool. Although you can create what you want on it, you can create a whole album or a whole set, it limits what you can do by necessity, really, because of the size of it. So you don't have access to all the VSTs you've got on your computer. You don't have access to all the synths you've got in the studio. So it sort of focuses your mind. And this has been on holiday with me quite a few times. And I've just found it's a really nice little thing to get ideas going. And because you write stuff in a different way, because it's a tracker, you do create things that you wouldn't normally create. So well worth checking out, and if you are into your beats and, and create your music on the go, this is a, a great little tool, no complaints whatsoever. I really, really like it.
Street, street, street. 